and good morning from a cloudy Rock Hill, South Carolina. We had a big thunderstorm in the night. It was big and uh, it cracked. I thought it, it uh, the lightning may be what sounded like it, it hit our tree. It, was, it sounded so close. But I personally like thunderstorms and I love rain or thunderstorms at night when you're all snuggled in your bed. So it didn't bother me, but it's a nice um, cloudy morning. So I have the, the window open so you can see one of our trees out there. But we welcome you wherever you're coming to us from and whenever you're coming to us from. Uh, we uh, thank the Lord for your um, your visits. Uh, many states uh, come in and, and visit us and, and that's that's precious and wonderful. And that's one of the ways that God uses um, technology. Uh, we know that that our enemy uses it too, but God also uses it. And, uh, and I thank the Lord for that. I thank him for his word, his precious word. And we have May uh, here, uh, flowers are blooming and uh, grass is growing. And, uh, and we pray that we're blooming and growing where we are too, with God's word um, nestled in our heart as we uh, water it and tend to it and till it and pull out the weeds and make sure it grows in us. Um, we're gonna continue with the verse of uh, Psalm 139 verses nine and 10 where it's uh, King David is talking, and we talked about him last week. If I ride the morning winds to the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. Um, and so we talked about what are morning winds and where did they take David? We learned about David and his morning wind that um, blew, that came into him in the form of uh, carelessness uh, took him to the farthest ocean there could be and and very deep sin but i want to say an addendum to that at the end of that um that god was there he did bring him to he's, david repented and god continued to use him not in the same way because the consequences of that carelessness were e enormous in david's life but god god continued to use him uh, we have to remember all of David's life. That was one terrible part, but there was also really wonderful parts of his life. And we have to remember, we can make really, really bad decisions. We can be blown into the farthest ocean where we think God can never use me or this is who I am. No, that's what we did. And uh, we can be forgiven because shame is about who we are and guilt is about what we did. God can forgive the, the worst guilt that we have by the blood of his only son. So we have to remember that, that, that we can't be defined by a wind that blew us, maybe even by our own choice, as it was with David's. His carelessness blew him into that far ocean where he said, even if I am carried there, even there, he learned that. And so we want to come to the next part that the Lord laid on my heart. And that's, that's the morning wind. The first one is the morning wind of carelessness in David's life. This one I want to talk to you about is the morning wind of curiosity. Um, we first saw this in Eve, um, <laughs> the very first woman, uh, and uh, curious. We, we, we think mo most of us are by nature curious. Um, if there's a door that says do not open, at least for me, there's a part of me that goes, oh, I just want to see what's, be why can't I open that door? What's behind that door? You know, when you're, when you're, um, you're visiting a museum or something, you know, do not walk past this or, or whatever. There's a curiosity of what is, what is there. And so we see this in Eve, the very first woman, you know, what, well, you know, the serpent came to her and she was curious about what he said. Well, may well, maybe that's true. Maybe God didn't want us, you know, and on and on. And we know what happened from there. Um, this is what, uh, Proverbs 18, 15 says, an intelligent heart acquires knowledge and the ear of the wise seek knowledge. So we have two verbs there, acquire and seek. And what, what do we do from both of those? What's the end of those? Acquire knowledge and seek knowledge. Walt Disney says this, curiosity keeps leading us down new paths. Mm, that's an important one. It keeps leading us down new paths. Um, and that can be great. And that can be not so great. It can be great if that curiosity that we have within us uh, takes us to uh, thirsting after God, uh, seeking his word, finding his will, uh, 
discovering his face, as we've talked about. All of those things, uh, cur curiosity, you know, that seeking in our heart that God puts, puts there, they can lead to incredible, incredible growth in our life and discovery in our life. But they could also, that curiosity can also lead us um, and blow us by that wind of curiosity into a far, far ocean. Our enemy uses it. Our enemy uses the, the natural trap of curiosity to trap God's kids. Um, and you know why, or you know, and you know how, I'm sure you do. It only takes one click and we've, we, we I'm talking about we as humans, we can open up a whole world of darkness and filth and things that we don't even understand. Some things that they're in the world, I don't even understand what they mean. And I don't want to know. I'm not, am I curious? Sometimes I go, what? But I've learned, I'm old enough to learn. I've made too many mistakes doing that in the past. I'm not going to go down that road. I'm not going to click. I'm not going to ask. I'm not going to investigate. In other words, I'm not going to take the or ride the wind of curiosity into a place that's so bad. Our young people are are so at risk for this because one, one of those clicks can lead to um, uh, pornography. And once you see it, you can never unsee it. You can never unsee those images. It can lead to false teaching. You're reading it. You're taking it in. Hmm, I heard about that. Let me check into that. Yeah, we have to be careful because that curiosity can take us into a false teaching that takes us completely into a far ocean, as David said. It can blow us into a place that we can't get back from, um, only with that, only with God's help. It can take us um, to dark forces. Our young people can be taken to many areas of darkness, um, uh, the occult. Uh, uh, the occult games and Ouija boards and demonic films and lyrics from songs that that when you start humming them or seeing them with your eyes again you can't forget you can't unsee things that go in through our eyes and, and go in through our ears <clears throat> these are all portals that that we have to fill with God's word <laughs> and God's spirit you know and a loving kind of all of those things that's what we have to fill ourselves with so curiosity could open the door to all these things that I just mentioned. Um, some of the lyrics of songs today, they're jaw dropping and they are demonic. They are from the pit of hell. They have nothing to do with teenage love and, and laughter. And, you know, when I was going to school, you know, one of our, one of the top rated songs, one of the years was I'm going to the chapel cause I'm going to get married. <laughs> I don't even know if that would fly today, but that was a big song in my day. And uh, holding hands, I want to hold your hand. That was Sonny and Cher's first big hit. Uh, and I, again, I don't even know if people would accept that today. But when I was a teenager, that was that was pretty good. We, I want to hold your hand. The lyrics today, Satan doesn't even try to hide anymore. They're dark and evil and satanic. They're anti-God and anti-morality. And the reason I'm saying this is because curiosity can unleash our children and ourselves into those areas if we if we allow it. So we have to be careful that those winds of curiosity do not take us a place that God does not want us to be. Um, there's insight as I as I study this about um, the lost sheep and the parable in Matthew 18. It's told in two um, books, one in Luke. And that talks about the unsaved, the unbeliever being the sheep. And in Matthew 18, which is the one I'm referring to, talks about the believing sheep. Um, uh, so we're going to talk about the morning wind of curiosity in the life of this little sheep. Um, the wandering sheep in the fold is part of the fold. Let's not forget that. He's part of the church. All the sheep know him. He's in the flock. He goes to church every Sunday. He's with the, he knows the shepherd, calls him by name, hears his voice, knows his voice. He's in the flock. And that's what really grabbed me. This sheep was in the flock, was protected, was cared for. So what happened? 
what steps led this little sheep to be lost on the mountaintop. What I realized is the sheep is us. It's a story for us to take notice of. And that's what I want us to do this morning. Take notice of this morning wind of curiosity in uh, this little sheep and how we can apply that to us. So how does curiosity come to play? Well, the first thing is the shepherd's voice. The Bible says in uh, John 10, 27, my sheep know my voice. And we do know God. If you belong to the Lord, you know his voice. And if you don't know, you, you can know. I remember as a young Christian testing, because I'll tell you why, because the voice always sounds always sounded like me. The, I, I would think, is that the devil, me or God? Uh, which of the three? And uh, you have to test that out to know when God is talking to you. I figured out that I knew that when the voice um, was not the was either me or, or, or my enemy was the voice that pushed me away from God, that pushed my head down, that separated me, isolated me, you know, made me feel that wasn't the voice of God. And I began to understand that the voice of God could correct me, but it was always the voice of my father pulling me in to his arms, pulling me into repentance, pulling me into growth. You see what I'm saying? So I had to figure that out. So if you don't know how God's voice speaks in your own life, test it out. Ask the Lord, show me so that I may always know your voice. So we need to know the shepherd's voice. And this sheep did know the shepherd's voice. So we have to ask ourselves, hmm, who are we listening to? Are we listening to the voice of our shepherd when God speaks to us, even if he speaks in a whisper? Can we hear it? <laughs> I remember saying to God many times as I was growing in the Lord, Lord, even, even if you have to push me down and step on my face to get my attention, please do. Don't let me be lost. Don't let me not hear you because I knew me and how crazy I was and that I could just go off. And so I said, please make sure that I hear you. But as I grow in the Lord, I don't want to have to be knocked over and, and you know, God yelling in my face. I want to be able to hear him even if he whispers and and we can. And this little sheep knew the voice, the, the gentle voice of his shepherd. Um, we have to ask ourselves not only whose voice are we listening to, but who has a voice in our life. We want to make sure it's the shepherd's voice that we hear. You know, as a, as a mom, we tune out mom, don't we? We can just, because we hear it so often. If you've got, if you're in a room full of, and you hear mom, nobody turns around. Uh, and I've said this before, sometimes they have to say your, your first and last name or uh, my kids used to say, Vicki. And then I would turn around and say, Mom, I've been saying your name. It's because I just tuned it out. Well, we can do that with the Lord's voice too. We can just keep going and not answering and not responding to his voice. And if we do that, then it becomes easier for us to tune out the voice of the shepherd. I'm wondering if that's what happened to this little sheep. If he just had heard the voice of the shepherd so many times that he just tuned out. The next thing is distractions. Curiosity is a distraction. It's very subtle. It's very subtle, but that's what it is. It's a distraction. So the little sheep is in the, in the flock, as we said. He's part of the flock, and he follows the shepherd, and everybody knows him. And he just is a happy little sheep, thinking little happy sheep thoughts that they have. And then one day, curiosity, the wind of curiosity came. A distraction, a glance. The first step was a glance at a new path. They had been this area so many times over, but this particular time, he got a distraction. He looked to his left or his right, and he saw a new path. It was just a glance. That's the allure of something being different. That's the allure of curiosity. It's just a little bit different. And so he was interested. He was curious. Hmm, I wonder where that goes. Then he said, hmm, how come the shepherd doesn't take us there? Entitlement. We need to go there. Look at that. We've never, we always go the same way. And I'm tired of this way. And look, there's a new path. And I wonder why he doesn't take us there. And those are the first steps to get into the wind 
The morning wind of curiosity has just taken over in this little sheep's life. I hope we're applying this to our own self because that's what I want us to do. The next step, the next day, they're going down the same area that they go to to, to, to graze and to feed. But the next day, it's not just a, a glance, it's a look. The glance is longer. Why? Because curiosity is not satisfied. Curiosity isn't satisfied with just a glance. That's why you can never do just the click. That's why you never do the first step because the first step will lead to the next one and the next one and the morning wind will take us to the farthest ocean of curiosity. And this is what happened. The glance became longer. Oh, there's that same path. Hmm, curiosity. The appetite had been engaged for this little sheep. It was already engaged. The next day, it was a glance and then a longer glance and then talking about why the shepherd didn't take us there. The next day, a sniff. Oh, a different, not just the eye, but another sense. Mm, a sniff. Oh, that's that's different. That's that, that vegetation over there. That smells a little different. Something I've not had before. Wow, that's really interesting. Appetite engaged, as I said. Yeah, he wanted to find out more and more. The next step, a lingering away from the flock, abandoning God's people, abandoning the flock, all of his other flock friends, all of his other little sheep friends, lingering away from them, putting himself in isolation as he took those little hooks and he scampered over, you know, and smelled that, you know. That was the next step, a lingering away from his safety, from his people, you know, from, from where he belonged. Then he had to hurry back. He realized he was out of order. He had to hurry back into the flock to find his place in the flock. Very quickly getting back there because that's consciousness of being out of God's will. God won't just let us go. We know when we've strayed too far and uh, he had to hurry back. So he wouldn't be missed. So nobody would say, where's Sam the sheep? Where's, where'd he go? Uncomfortable. When we start to, 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 to uh, our curiosity starts pulling us away from God's people, from his church, from his will, from his word, from our relationship with him, we are uncomfortable. There's that uncomfortableness in our spirit where we don't have peace. Awareness of that. He had that awareness. The next day, curiosity is in full bloom because the next day, action took place. The next day, he didn't, he didn't just glance. He didn't just do a, longer, a, a lingering glance. He didn't just scamper over and sniff and then run back. He nibbled. This time he nibbled. Yes, oh, he just couldn't stand any longer. What that tasted like, I have to find out because I've never tasted this vegetation over in this area. So he took a little nibble of the new vegetation, new, something different, the allure of something different. He took a little nibble, mm, yum. I wonder if there's more farther up. He started here, he's very close to the path, but then after he took the nibble, his eyes went even further up the road, up the path of the mountain and said, mm, I wonder if there's even more bigger vegetation, thicker, that's further up that pathway, curiosity. It was yummy. The Bible says sin's yummy in the beginning. Yeah, it is. It for sure is. That's how our enemy gets us. And that's what happened to this little sheep. Action. He took a nibble and then, he, then his eyes began to go further up the road. Then the next thing, he ran as fast as his little hooks could take him back. He got, he got back to the flock. But then he realized that that whole next 24 hours, he was, even though he wasn't at that new path, he was thinking about it. He thought about what that tasted like. He thought about what that path looked like and thought, hmm, even when he wasn't close to it, it was in his mind because his thoughts had not been held captive. No, his thoughts were, were only on that something new. I'm curious, we're so close to it, but we've never gone there. And I'm curious, the, the morning wind of curiosity. 
The next time he spends more time in the new place. I like going there. He's rationalizing now. I like going there. He's reckless now. No one seems to even notice that I'm not back in the flock. I'm always back in the back of the flock anyway. Nobody pays much attention to me. I, I, I'm going to stay just a little bit longer. I'm going to eat just a little bit more. And then he, he makes it back to the flock that time too. Then the next time he changes his place in the flock to make his access to the new place easier. You see, hear, hear what I said? He changes his place within the flock to make access to his curiosity, that curiosity, that I want to get there easier, to make that easier for him. A new place, a new position. He didn't inquire of the shepherd. He did not trust the shepherd's guidance. He never spoke to anyone. He just was on his own and made his own decisions and put himself in a place that made his access easier. He rationalized why this was acceptable, like we do. Why, that tasted good. My stomach feels wonderful. I, I'm satisfied. The shepherd doesn't take us here. He's keeping something from us. He knows this is yummy food. And why, 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 why won't God let me go there? Why doesn't God do this? Why doesn't the shepherd allow us to come here? I can take care of myself. The other sheep might not even like this new grass, but I do. Rationalization, being exclusive. You know, sometimes people are uh, super spiritual. You know, it's the new grass. It's their grass and they've discovered it. And you poor thing, you haven't discovered the grass that I've discovered. And I'm not saying that for everyone, but it can happen where um, there's this, everything's new and the, my answer is always the same because I think because I'm an old fogey at heart is I'm not looking for too much new, a new revelation because I have not fulfilled the old revelation. There's enough of God that I've not discovered that I don't really need anything new. But there is that thing of something new, the newest thing there. God is not new. He's always been where he is. He is the eternal transcendent God that we, we worship and serve, and he will reveal things to us. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying we have to be careful that we don't get on a bandwagon of, uh, of listening to someone who has new grass, and it's only grass that I've discovered, and it's my grass, and uh, you know that kind of attitude. I think you get what I'm saying. Exclusivity. This is this little sheep wanted exclusivity, and he didn't know why. Why, why in the world wouldn't the shepherd bring us here? This is where it's at. This new grass, curiosity. The next distraction is even further up the path. Because as he's gone up there and looked up, oh, he sees something more. Don't think the enemy will not show you something more because he will. He will show you something further up the path. And that's what happened. The trajectory of this little sheep's life began to change. He lost all consciousness of the flock. He didn't even think about them. He couldn't even hear the shepherd's voice anymore. He was on his way up that path to that new, that new place, that new vegetation, curiosity. It drove him away from the flock and away from the shepherd. There are many, I want you to get this. This is the, what the Lord really impressed upon my heart. There are many, 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 many hoof prints between being lost in the farthest ocean and being in the flock. It, does, it wasn't just the first step. It wasn't just a glance. That was only the first step. In order to get lost, the, with which this little sheep ended up, many, many, many hoof prints were between that first glance and being lost. We have to understand that. That being in the farthest ocean of curiosity starts with the first step. Don't take it. Don't take it. So what happened between curiosity and sin? This is what happened. Yes, 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 yes. We have to say yes to so many things because being tempted is not a sin. That's not a sin. Jesus was tempted. 
but he answered the temptation with God's word. And aren't you thankful for that? That he didn't say, well, I'm Jesus. No, he said, this is what God's word says. That's our way. This is what God's word says. I'm not going down that path. I'm not going to glance. No, I'm not even going to glance. I'm following the shepherd. Right there he is, right ahead of me. I hear his voice. I know his word. That's where I'm going. So I'm not going to glance at that path that you've brought in my way, enemy. Even there, though, even there in that place. And that's the wonderful part of these teachings is even there. God's hand was there to guide him back to the fold, to take him back to safety. The shepherd braved the treacherous mountain terrain. His feet were cut by the deep, jagged rocks that he had to go over. The wind blew through his robe. He had 99, but he went after the one. He went after just the one. The cold wind, the steep path, the jagged rocks. He heard the bleeding of the sheep. He heard him and he knew that he had gone there of his own accord. He was lost. There was no way for him to extricate himself from the place where he found himself, where the wind of curiosity, the morning wind of curiosity had blown him to a place where he was, he was, a slave to it. He couldn't get out off of that mountain by himself. But the shepherd knelt down in humility and carried the weight of that lost sheep, us, wrapped him on the back of his neck, held his little hoofs together so he wouldn't fall off because it was a treacherous path down, just like it had been a treacherous path up. And God, Jesus, the shepherd, took that precious little sheep back to the fold, back to church, back to forgiveness, back to restoration. That's the end of it. Even there, even in that place of lostness, that little sheep that where curiosity had taken him so far away from the flock, even there, even there, God's hand guided him back and his strength supported him. Jesus bore on his own body. I don't, I don't know if, why that is on there at the screen, but I'm going to get rid of it. Um, even there. Even there. He's there. So maybe your curiosity hasn't taken you all the way to the top of the mountain, but maybe it's taken you far away from the flock. Far, maybe you haven't heard his voice clearly. Whatever that is, if you're, if you're on any of those paths, as, if you're just a few steps away from the flock, scurry back now. Listen to his voice. If you're farther up the path, stop now. Turn around. And go back. If you're all the way to the top of the mountain and you know you are, then know that, that God, God today is coming to find you, to get you, to bring you back. And he bore on his own body the weight of our sin to take us back to relationship with him. That's the great part. The, the, the morning wind of curiosity is the is the challenge that we have to pay attention to. The end of the verse is the great hope that we have, that even if we are blown in the farthest winds of curiosity and we end up on a, a, a storm-tossed mountain and we're freezing cold and we can't get down and we know we've messed up, the shepherd's coming and his kind face reaches down to rescue us, to bring us back. That's the great hope that we have. And I pray that that would be your hope today, if that's where you find yourself. Well, I thought I was going to get through both of them, but I didn't. I'm sorry. Next week, we're going to go through this, um, and hopefully maybe start the next verse, the, um, the morning wind of catastrophe. We did carelessness, curiosity, and next week, catastrophe. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for the, the beauty of your word, Lord. Thank you for uh, allowing us to see how this story could so easily apply to us. And, and that, that you asked the question, and I, or you, I, my heart asked the question, well, how did he get lost? How did that little sheep get lost? And you showed us the way that that can happen. And so, Lord, we thank you that you bring um, uh, clarity of your word into our lives to see. So if we're 
if we're uh, curious people by nature, Lord, help us to be curious, to know you more, to know your word, to follow after you, to, to, so that we can hear your voice even when you whisper and not be curious for things that can bring disaster to our lives and, and to bring us to a place of lostness. And we thank you that you are there, Lord, that wherever we are on that path, if we're in the flock, if we're a few feet off of it, if we're halfway up the, the path or if we're all the top of the mountain, Lord, that you, you are there to bring restoration. And we thank you for that. We love you so much, Lord, for your word and for your love for us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you next week.